before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, my friends. Hello, my friends. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is just kind of going to be a little quick, quickie video. Hopefully, we'll see how long I can talk for because I want you guys to join us over on Solutions with Shanti. Link will be down in the description box below today at noon eastern time so new york city time atlanta georgia time that's noon for us it's a live show so whatever that means for you in your time zone i want you to go over and join us on shanti's channel because we are going to be looking at the lori vallow chad daybell case now ironically i believe that Chad Daybell's trial started this week. I believe, please correct me if I'm wrong. Lori Vallow's already in prison for life. Like she's already been put away for life. This is definitely like a true crime story. But I, with Shanti, I want to look not just, you know, honor the victims of, of this, these, this couple. There's a lot of them, um, but also look at their delusions of, of grandeur, we'll say. Um, because it's super relevant to what we're going through right now in our own communities and our in our own lives. So please, please, please join us if you can join in the live chat if you are familiar with this case. I'm not going to go into too many details on the, of the case in this video on my channel. Join us over on Shanti's. The reason why. So the thing that we're doing, guys, like on Monday, I go on Aquarius Rising Africa, Shanti's other channel, where we do deep dives into history. And so I always kind of do the first video on my channel to give you guys the information so you can join us over on Aquarius Rising Africa and, and put your opinions into it as well because we're looking at kind of decoding history, gossiping about these delusional people of the past. But it's it's harmless in the sense that these people have been, lo they're long since gone, right? For hundreds of years they've been gone. So we can be a little bit more comical in our approach and we can learn from history in order to course correct some things that are repeating themselves in our own historical timeline etc cetera, etc cetera. however on wednesdays we're looking at cases that are here in our modern times that are like in 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 real life happening like we talked about um ruby frankie and jody hildebrand that that, that is happening right now and the Lori vallow chad daybell case are also in our time period so i'm not going to give a breakdown like I do with the historical stuff on my channel first, just join us over with, with Shanti at, at noon and we'll talk about the details of this case. But again, why this case is so important. You guys know that I talk about the law of one all the time. I think the law of one is brilliant in its template and its explanation over what's going on in our world right now as far as like the spiritual battle. Um, you can get the Law of One books yourself. I highly recommend you get the books yourself and read it for yourself. However, just, just briefly, the Law of One does state that we are on a polarized planet, dark and light. And there's different, or service to self, service to others, and there's different personality types that are associated with each polarity. And the darkness is constantly going to be trying to get people of the light to move to the darkness. Because if they can polarize you negative, they're going to get way more energy right 
So what we see in a lot of, and I've, I've, I've talked about this for a while, this is my problem, my big problem with the truther community is that most people in the truther community are, follow, are following the negative path. And a lot of this is because anytime there's a system of elitism, anytime there's a pecking order, like somebody's the king or somebody is, you know, ordained by divine right, or somebody has, is a prophet, labels themselves a prophet, or somebody is, you know, God's special person, labels themselves or society labels them as God's special per person. We're looking at a negative polarity. And we're seeing this a lot in the truther community too. So the belief system of Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow are very, very, they mirror a lot of belief systems of the truth or community. And that's why it's so important because I know that there is infiltration in the truth or community. I think about 90% of the truth or community is infiltrated and is controlled opposition, getting people to go negative. Um, and so, you know, and a lot, you know, if, if you're following somebody in this community that's telling you that they are the only person sitting on the Galactic Federation board, or they're the only person that can, can communicate with the Galactics, or for some reason, they're the new royalty, or like the fake Tesla, Kim Kukic Tesla, who says she's the niece, she's not the niece of Tesla. You know, if you follow her on her account, she's always talking about how she's the new royalty. That's all negative stuff. That's all part of the negative system, okay? So Chad, uh, Chad and Lori Daybell were doing this kind of that they were going to be like the king and queen of heaven. I'm, I'm This is my own words because I'm not Mormon. And that one thing that was really interesting about Chad is that he could like, he would tell his people that he could see somebody and mark whether they were of the light or of the darkness just by looking at them. That is very reminiscent of a lot of people in the truth or community or they're using their pendulums to tell you if someone is good or bad. No, we have to have actual evidence and proof. To show you if someone is good or, or good or bad and we don't unalive them just because we feel like they are not a good good soul which is what Lori and chad were doing they you know Lori even unalived her two children young children because she felt like they were zombies so their their body had been taken over by a dark entity all right so this is why these stories are really, really, really important, especially right now. They're, they're stories of, of their warning stories of what can happen when the wrong people are in charge. And we follow these delusional people, right? This is another reason why I am, I have said this before when it comes to spirituality, I will not have anybody on my channel who is a spirit, a spiritualist who doesn't have a teacher or who doesn't have a lineage. All right. If they're just somebody that thinks they can channel because they were given a gift from God and they've had nobody actually teach them or actually sit with them, that is a huge, huge red flag because the ego, the ego is a fickle, fickle thing. Right. And a lot of times if we don't have proper teaching in proper um, a mentor to help us see our blind spots, we confuse Listen closely, we confuse our imagination with our intuition. Our imagination is going to be ego feel filled. It's going to make us believe that for some reason we're the chosen one. And for some reason we've been, been put on this timeline to Star Wars the shit out of what's going on. And we're the real, you know, bloodline of God. Listen, if you're alive, you're you're a bloodline of God. Like the darkness can't create anything, only God can create. So if you're a living, breathing being, we're all the bloodline of God, right? So, but if you're stuck in your ego and you and thus your imagination, and the darkness is going to use that, right? The, the fourth density negative beings are going to play with your ego. They're going to give you, make you believe that yes, your imagination is correct. You. You are the reincarnate of Mary Magdalene. It's you, boo. How many, how, like, seriously, guys, like, how many people on Telegram are out there saying that they're Mary Magdalene? Come on. Come on. You know, they're going to use this idea of reincarnation. And I've said this before because I absolutely believe in reincarnation, but it doesn't matter. Whoever you were in the past doesn't matter. 
you might carry karma over from the past that you got to work work through but guess what you carried it over into this life so guess what my friends you got to work through it in this life what matters is the here and now people who get obsessed with reincarnation and, and obsessed with like past lives are people in my experience doing this professionally off offline nine times out of ten these are going to be people that are avoiding this life there's something so huge in this life that they don't want to that they don't want to work through that they're going to disassociate by trying to come up with a past life story that they can live in this disassociated reality of a past life existence in order not to acknowledge what they need to be working through in this life and that is a surefire way to get you to have to reincarnate back on this planet if you're not willing to, to look at look at this life so these are all really huge red flags right and this is something that chad and and lori Vallow, chad daybell would do they would talk about how you know lori or chad would like enchant lori by telling her that they had been married in like all these previous lifetimes and they were you know destined to be together and that she was an eternal being you know chad also used his near-death experiences as a reason to you know uh anoint himself with having some supernatural abilities and and you know i do get it my, my grandfather had had a near-death experience and he it definitely changed him as a human being but he never he never pretended like he was somehow god's favorite or that he knew things that others didn't know just because he had had a near-death experience you know just because somebody has an alleged near-death experience does not mean that they can take ownership over you nor does it mean that they know more about your purpose than you do people who have visions that's for them those visions are for them guess what my friends you're all a prophet there's no such thing as someone being a prophet and someone else not being a prophet we're all prophets we all have the ability to hear from god we all have the ability to have our own intuition right now you can go to healers i go to healers all the time but a good healer a good channeler is going to a have a teacher b have an accountability they're accountable to a system and c they're never going to dominate you they're never going to make it about them they're going to tell you what they're getting and they're going to be like you know if this resonates with you great if it doesn't that's you know follow your own intuition over mine they're always going to say that to you and we don't see that with chad daybell and Lori ballo and we're not seeing that with a lot of the truthers especially on telegram i've spoken a lot about my situation with the enough is enough group and that is a really huge red flag because that group on telegram if you don't buy in to their grandiose delusions their imagination of what's going on then they'll kick you out of the group they'll censor you all right so that's a huge red flag and again so i'm trying to make the cross reference between what we see in the chad daybell lori vallow case versus what we're seeing on in groups like telegram it's the same thing you know just because somebody hasn't been unalived yet doesn't mean that that's not coming you know the thing about you know with, with lori and chad also the same as ruby and jody the rudy ruby frankie jody hildebrandt case is that we are looking at mormon extremist groups like doomsday groups and even though all religions are part of the darkness like even I, I'm, I'm very come down very hard on fundamentalist christianity the only difference is with the mormons you have this old teaching of blood atonement so that's when it gets even scarier with like the mormon um group is that in some of these especially these more fundamentalist doomsday groups there is that idea of blood atonement which we can talk more about with uh shanti over on solutions when we at noon when we go over this this case and what that means and so i would just i just really i mean i i i think that all of you guys you know in this community i consider you all friends and the last thing i want is for somebody to wake up only to be put back to sleep and brought down the negative path because as we've learned from the law of one as well as the emerald tablets when you start to awaken that's when the darkness comes for you even more
So the darkness is going to stroke your ego. It's going to do everything it can to get you to polarize negative. So please be mindful. I would, I would highly suggest any of these spiritualists that you're following on YouTube, take everything they say with a grain of salt. Always maintain your own sovereignty. And if things get weird, just ask them who their teacher, who's your, who's your teacher? Who is your teacher? What lineage are you studying under? Who are you accountable to? And if they don't have one, I would walk away. Absolutely walk away. Um, not good. That is not good at all. I would also be very weary of these spiritualists who have really big channels. Um, because if you are speaking truth, like I, you know, like me and some of my friends, you know, we get shadow banned. We get shadow banned. So if people aren't being shadow banned, then then that's because they're not a threat. What they're saying is so utterly ridiculous that the powers that be aren't worried about them. They'll just eat themselves. Okay. So anyway, I'm digressing. I just, this is just why these cases are so important for us. So it's, it's also really important for us to honor the victims like Ty Lee, JJ, Tammy, Charles. There's victims that we, we absolutely need to honor and, and show our love to, but we need to heed the lessons of this. We're going to talk a little bit about Julie Rowe as well. I'm not super familiar with Julie Rowe. Um, I'm kind of nervous to talk about her because I, I, from what I understand, she's a little vicious. Um, she's another one though, that I'm very dubious of. She's in the Netflix documentary, the sins of the mother, which is about this case. So if you haven't seen that documentary, I would suggest watching it. And there are some things that she says that I do agree with, but there are things that she says that I absolutely do not agree with and are huge red flags to me. Um, there are some stuff she says that are absolutely part of the negative side. I don't know if she's aware of that. Um, I think she's one of those two that has claimed to have a near death experience. And all of a sudden she's like, you know, the, the Oracle of the ages or whatever, where all of a sudden she, she now holds the keys to our, to our prophetic future. And I just, again, that's guys, you gotta be, gotta be very, very aware of that. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, and we see it in the tarot card community. So many people are reading tarot cards and that's not how you read tarot cards. And they're creating stories. There's one in particular that you could tell she's reading off of a teleprompter. So just be very aware of this, guys, and, and know that, you know, we're in a time in our, our life. We are in a, in a, I'm a very firm believer that we are in a time of awakening. We're in the age of Aquarius where we have so much going on and, and there's so much friction out there and, and we are polarizing hopefully positive to the fourth density from the third density and i i do believe that but with that being said i also know that the fourth density negative is going to fight hard to to claim as many souls as it can so just be very very aware of delusions of grandeur be very very well aware of your own imagination just know that reincarnation in my opinion is very real but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if somebody is focused so much with you on who you were in the past then that's a dangerous person to be around because right now right now i'm bryce i'm not any of the people i were back then right now i am bryce and that is what's important right now you are you and that's what's important the you, whoever I was in a past life is not the person I am going through this ascension. The person who is going through this ascension in this incarnation is Bryce. So that's what I need to focus on, not the past. The past already happened. Yes, there's karma there, but it needs to be filtered through this perspective. And as, as Shanti says a lot, and I think this is true, how interesting it is that whenever people talk about the past lives, you're never like just some peasant sweeping the road. Like how many people have been told they're this person or that person or that queen or that king? We can't all be that person, right? It doesn't matter. What matters is now any, any good spiritual teacher is going to focus on you in the here now, right? What the friction you're, you're dealing with now. And I would use that, you know, if you're finding yourself becoming obsessed with, with your past lives, I would highly suggest um, reconsidering, are you avoiding something in this life? 
past life's done. You know, if you go back and study the Yoga Sutras, study Patanjali's perspective on Prakriti nature, Purusha, the soul, and Ishvara God, the Shiva, the Shakti. The Shiva is the soul that creates the Shakti. The Shakti is a limited experience. The Shiva is the eternal. So if we're so focused on limited experiences, then we're not focused on the eternal experience. And, and by that, we get stuck in Maya, which is illusion, and we stay on that karmic that karmic wheel of reincarnation, right? So I, and if that's confusing to you, then I would say that that is a really good sign that you need a teacher. If what I just said is confusing to you, find a teacher, okay? Because once you find a teacher and you work through this with a teacher, it won't be confusing and you'll be able to see delusion for what it is, yeah? And you won't get stuck in some crazy cult that ends up unaliving innocent people, yeah? You know, we see that in the truther community. How many groups in this telegram truther world are accusing innocent people of things they haven't done. I've had that happen to me. A lot of people have had it happen to them. And, you know, a lot of times I feel like that, you know, uh, talking about my experience with Enough is Enough group, which I'll link that video down below, you know, um, when Gordon, the guy who owns Enough is Enough, said that I was really born a man, which isn't true. I, I'm 100% biologically female. I was so hurt by that because that's such a cruel, a very cruel thing to say about a woman. And I had helped him grow his channel. Um, and my, my boyfriend made, made a good point. He was like, listen, Gordon is like 400 pounds. He's probably, he was probably bullied as a child. He probably has had a lot of women turn him down and he took that aggression out on you. And I said to my boyfriend, I was like, well, I never made him believe that I was available. I always was very clear that I had you. I had a partner. And he goes, it doesn't matter. These people are so freaking hurt. They have their, they have so many wounds that they have not healed, that they have not worked on. And then they get stuck in the ego. They get stuck in the ego of imagination and delusion that they take those wounds and they use those wounds as weapons against other people. And it just builds karma for themselves. That's all it does. It just builds karma for themselves because people like Gordon, in my opinion, are not working on themselves. They're absolutely stuck in delusion and imagination. That's why on that Telegram group, if you don't believe what they're saying, if you don't believe their delusions, you get kicked off, right? And they make up stories about you like they did about me. Um, or they did about my some of my friends, they made stories up about some of my friends. You know, it's it's um and, and this is why this is so important, you guys. It's so important. You know, the Cassiopeians have said at this point that only three percent of the human population is actually going to survive whatever is coming. And I know people don't like to hear that, but I actually agree with them because so many people some of the most asleep people in the world are the people in the truther community. Because as Catherine Edwards said, they're arrogant and ignorant. People become arrogant because they think they know the truth. And they're so arrogant that they close their mind and become ignorant of their own delusions, of their own imagination. And again, that is why we're going through the Jody Hildebrandt, Ruby Frankie case. That is why we're going to go through um, Chad and Lori Daybell, that case, because there are so many red flags that mirror what is happening in our own community. And hopefully, hopefully, if people can see it for what it is, it will help more people really wake up. Because to truly wake up, to be awake, is to not be in the normie world or the truth of the world. Because they're both puppeted by the same fourth density negative being. All right, you guys, I know that sounds a little wild, but we'll, we'll get more into that in Overall Solutions with Shanti um, and, and the correlations we see massively. I mean, again, back to, to Chad Daybell being able to say whether someone has a dark or light soul. That's not Chad's place. That's not anybody's place. I believe in my heart, I believe I know who some organic portals are. My job, if I believe that, is to separate myself from that person. That's my job. My job is not to unalive them. My job is not to attack them. 
my job is simply just to put up boundaries around myself because there is a possibility that I could be wrong. And the outcome of their soul, their life is between them and God. It's got nothing to do with me. But someone like Chad, who thinks he can actually see an aura and label whether somebody is good or bad, and then take that power into his own hand by unaliving, we see a lot of that in the truther community. A lot of people saying that they can read and tell whether someone's good or bad or not. You know, even again, back to the enough is enough page. They would list names of quote unquote truthers that were good and who was bad and who you should watch and who you shouldn't watch. That's a huge red flag. If somebody is telling you who you should or shouldn't watch, that's a huge red flag. And if you submit to that, you're submitting to a pecking order. You're submitting to the negative side right? No other human being is of more value than you are in the eyes of God. We are all equal in the eyes of God. And no other human being has the power or the anointing of God to be able to decide who is unalived and who isn't. Okay. When we go through court systems and we have evidence, actual evidence, that's when decisions can be made by the law of the land, if that makes sense. But you're not going to have in a court, a court situation, someone called in as a witness to say, yes, I see auras and that person's got a dark aura. They're a zombie. No, because that's not provable in the court of law. All right. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, guys, this case is just so, so interesting and it's so important. So I please join us, please. I cannot wait to hear your perspective over this case. Hopefully I've given you enough time. If you're not familiar with this case, if you're from another country where you can look up information about this case, if you want to know more about the case before we talk about it on solutions with Shanti at noon. So you have more of a, a say, more of an input into the conversation, but yeah. All right, you guys, again, and if you have Netflix, there is a documentary called the sins of the mother, a true hidden crime. I will link them below as well. They have a lot of stuff on this case too um if you want to catch up on some of their videos over the details especially the spiritual details of this case um highly highly i love their channel anyway i totally dig their channel so absolutely would, would recommend subscribing to them anyway so anyway guys with that being said i will see you over with shanti on solutions with shanti at noon bye everybody